Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flesser. And when you're creating a long document in Microsoft Word, there's a good chance you'll have to create a table of contents to go with it. Now, that might sound like a chore, but it really isn't. You can create a table of contents in just a few clicks and then go about tweaking it. Then later on, let's say if you make some changes to the document, you don't have to completely replace the table of contents. You can just update it with one click. What's also nice is that the table of contents is automatically hyperlinked. So you can use the hyperlinks in Word itself, or let's say if you convert it into a PDF, the table of contents in the PDF will also be hyperlinked. If you'd like to follow along this tutorial using your own document, that's great. Go right ahead. Or if you prefer, if you're watching this video on the Tuts Plus website, right here on this page, you can download a zip file that contains this document. It's a public domain physics textbook. And thanks to Professor Frank Furk for making it available. Now, there are actually several ways of creating a table of contents in Word. And I'm going to show you only the one or two ways that you'll ever use. And that is you can create a table of contents automatically using the built-in heading styles. And depending on how you're counting, you can also do it the second way or one and a half way of using your own custom-made styles. There are two other ways of creating a table of contents, but they're unnecessarily complicated. You'll never use them, so I won't even go into them in this tutorial. But first, we want to see the chapter and section headings in this document. It'll just make it easier to see what's going on. And there's two slightly different ways to do it in Windows and Mac. I'm right now using the 2013 version of Word, so I'll show you that first. And this will also work for the 2010 version. If you go over here to the View tab, click the View tab, and over here, turn on the Navigation pane, now you can see all of these headers. So I can click on Introduction, and I can see that's a major header. This number two, now over here we have this number three, this 3.1. Three so this is a first level header. In fact, I'll go back to the Home tab. I can see this number three, that's heading one. This 3.1, that's heading two. And if I go down here to this 3.3, I can see that's heading three. So this is what Windows calls the navigation pane. Let's take a look at the Macintosh. The Mac calls it the document map pane. And it doesn't matter which tab of the ribbon you're on. On the general toolbar, you can click this button right over here for document map pane. Now, if you don't see the document map pane, if you see one of these other items, you could click this little arrow here, this little drop down arrow, and then choose the document map pane instead of one of these other options. And then you can see over here on the left, it's the same exact thing. Okay, so now let's go and insert the table of contents. Let's go up here to the References tab, and we want to put the table of contents at the top of page two. Now you could scroll there if you want, but a little shortcut here is in Windows, press Control G, or on the Mac that would be Command G, type two, because you want to get to page two, and then just press the Enter key. And I'll just close out of here. I'll hit the escape key. So now I know I'm at the top of page two. And you can see down here in the lower left. I find that shortcut easy to remember because Go begins with the letter G. So in Windows, I'm over here on the References tab. I'm going to click over here on the Table of Contents button. And you see I have some automatic formats. And I'll just choose this table number two. And boom, there it is. Let me scroll back up and you can see. There is my table of contents. It just gets inserted. You notice that when I move the mouse over the table of contents, it gets kind of gray. That's how I know it's a field. There's the update button. We'll look at the update button a little bit later. Also, I was talking about hyperlinks. If I put my mouse pointer, let's say, over one of these items, see the little pop-up says control click? If I hold the control key down, mouse pointer changes to a hand. And if I click, boom, I go right to that item. I'll just go back. Inserting the table of contents is almost the same on the Mac. On the Mac, you go to the Insert menu, and about halfway down, choose Index and Tables. And then the rest of it is about the same. Also, you notice that I originally had only one page for the table of contents, but Word automatically inserted the additional pages that it needed. So that's what I consider the first method, is creating a table of contents from the built-in styles, heading one, two, and three. But there's a little bit of a problem. That's where we need sort of the second method. 
And you see the first item here in the table of contents is the introduction. And you can see over here on the left in the navigation pane or the map pane on the Mac, the first item is introduction. But if we scroll down here or use the page down key, you notice that there's a preface. And it's only after the preface that we have the introduction. So what if we want that preface in the table of contents? Now let's go to the Home tab for a moment. When you click inside preface, you see that's not heading one, two, or three. It looks almost like heading one, but it's a style called large heading, and that's just a custom style. Now, if we scroll down towards the end, actually I'll use the navigation pane. If I go here to 7.4 black holes and go right after that, you see we have an appendix. And if you click the appendix, then you see it's also that same custom style. So we want to include the appendix in that preface, and you see they're both using this large heading style. So this is sort of what I consider the second method. Let's go back to page two. However you want to do it is fine. And let's just remove the table of contents. I'll go back to references, table of contents, remove table of contents, and now it's gone. And creating a table of contents from custom styles is almost the same in Windows and Mac. So what we'll do is we'll go back to where we were before the table of contents drop down. But instead of choosing one of the built-in tables, let's go down here towards the bottom and choose Custom Table of Contents. That brings up this dialog box. If you're using a Macintosh, you would go back to the Insert menu and choose Index and Tables about halfway down, and that would bring you to basically the same dialog box here. You see, if you were to turn this document into a web page instead of a PDF, you would have these automatically hyperlinked entries in the Table of Contents. But right now, we want to go down here and choose Options. And you see here in the Options dialog box, it shows us some of the different ways that we can create a table of contents. Using styles, using outline levels, nobody in the 20 odd years that I've been teaching Microsoft Word, never once have I seen anybody using the outlining feature, so I'm just gonna turn that off. These table entry fields, as if you wanted to manually mark items to enter in the table of contents, nobody ever uses that. So we just wanna keep styles turned on. And here you can see the built-in headings, heading 1, 2, and 3, are related here to the table of contents level 1, 2, and 3. So that's how we had items like number 3, describing everyday motion, is the level 1 heading, the table of contents, and this relative velocities 3.3 became the level 3 in the table of contents level. Now we want to leave these. We don't want to move them around. Now let's say if you had additional built-in headings 4, 5, and 6, you can put those in. But let's scroll all the way down here towards the bottom. And you see this large heading? That large heading is the custom style that I created for the preface and the appendix. So let's just click in here. And we want that to be the same level as heading 1. So you can just type in a 1. And you see there gets a check there. And click OK. And click OK again. And now it puts it in. And look at that. There's the appendix listed. Scroll up to the top. And there's the preface. Okay, that's great. And I said earlier that if you needed to update the table of contents, you could do so without a lot of trouble. So let's say if instead of preface, we wanted that to say forward. Let's go there. I'll just control click there. It's just a faster way to get there. So I'm going to double click the word, turn on the caps lock key, call it forward. And now let's go back to page two. And we want to update it. You see it hasn't updated. Now, this is, I don't know if this is a bug or a feature, but sometimes when you roll the mouse over the table of contents, you get a little update button. We saw that earlier. Sometimes you don't, but that's okay because there are two other ways that you can update the table. Number one, you can right click somewhere and choose update field. Another way is if you don't like right clicks in the references tab, you could go over here and choose update table either way. And boom, there it goes. It changes the word preface to forward. Now, sometimes it might actually give you a little dialog box asking you, do you want to update just the page numbers or the whole table? So now that we have the table of contents, what if we want to format it a little bit? Maybe I want this to be Arial or Helvetica. Now, what you can do, but you really shouldn't, is you can select the text and then modify it like regular text. The problem is that you can see how easy it is to update or remove the table of contents and then all your formatting goes out the window. So it's best to do the formatting using built-in styles for the table of contents. And also this is pretty similar between Windows and Mac. I'll talk about Windows first. What we want to do here is we want to stay on the References tab, 
go back to table of contents, go down here to custom table of contents. We were in this dialog box before. Now, last time when we set the headings, we went to options. This time we want to click modify. And you can see in this dialog box, these are the built-in styles for the table of contents headings. If you're using a Macintosh, you go back to the insert menu, back to index and tables, and also you'll have that same modified button and you get the same dialog box. So what I want to do is this. I'll take this TOC one that's going to format the level one heading of the table. I'll go here to modify, and this is just a regular modify style dialog box. So instead of Times Roman, I'll click this and I'm going to choose Arial. If you want to choose Helvetica, that's fine. And 12 points is good, but I want to make that bold. Click OK. And now I'll take that TOC2 that's for the second level headings. Go to Modify. Also, I'll stick with Arial or Helvetica. And I'll leave that as normal, not bold. Leave it as 12 points. Click OK. And now I'll take the level 3 heading. Go to Modify. Same font, but I'm going to make this, let's say, 10 or 11 points. Click OK. I'm done. You can see here's a preview. Here's all the info. Click OK. Click OK. And here it asks me, do I want to replace it? And again, this is why you don't want to format manually. Click OK. And there it is. Let's scroll back up. And you can see here's the first level, second level, third level over here. So you can format this every way you want. Let's turn this into a PDF. I'll go up to the File tab. And again, slightly different depending on which version of Word you're using. But I'm going to go down here to Export. If you're using the 2010 version, you'd go to Share. 2013, you go to Export. And I'm going to create a PDF. And here I have an empty folder. I'll leave the same name. I'll open the file after publishing. Click Publish. There it is. It creates it. Scroll down. Here's my table of contents formatted the way we had. And when I put my mouse pointer over any of these items, see the mouse pointer turns to a hand and I can click and immediately get to that section. So you see, when you have a long document in Microsoft Word, you don't have to fear creating a table of contents. And whether you're using Windows or Mac, you can create a table of contents in just a few clicks. You can format it in just a few clicks and you can modify it any way you want. You just have to remember to drill down into those dialog boxes. So I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. Once again, my name is Bob Flisser for Tuts Plus, and I hope I see you later.